He was supposed to start his new job as a teacher and coach at Red Oak Middle School this fall. But instead of a new staff headshot, 38-year-old Jershon Kasten has a mugshot. And instead of visiting a classroom, we had to meet him in the Dallas County Jail. It's okay, it's okay. Just more than three weeks before the first day of school, Kasten was arrested. According to this arrest affidavit, he is accused of having sex multiple times with an 11-year-old girl he met at a gas station in Dallas and forcing her to perform sex acts for money over a 10-day period. How did you get here? How are you being accused of doing these things? I haven't had that revealed to me just yet. Um, as far as I know, I was just, um, you know, living my life one day and then, um, you know, the police came and got me. The report says the girl told him she was 21 when they met, but later during an argument, she told him she was 11 and wanted to go home. The girl told law enforcement, Kasten replied, I really don't care. Did you at all, from your recollection, come in contact with the 11 year old girl who is who's supposed to be the victim in this case? Um, no, I don't, uh, I don't know any minors. I don't know any minors. Is it possible that you came in contact with someone that you didn't know was a minor? No, I don't. The girl told police that during their time together, Kasten put a gun in her lap, gave her alcohol and marijuana, and told her he's a middle school and high school teacher. Through open records, we confirmed Kasten was a teacher and a coach. He worked in special education and coached girls basketball. So we spent months putting in public records requests with these seven North Texas school systems where Kasten has worked in the past 10 years. We wanted to know if he'd ever been investigated or put on leave for misconduct, and he had. Before Kasten applied to work with Red Oak ISD, he worked as a special education teacher and an assistant girls basketball coach at Duncanville High School for the 2022 to 2023 school year. According to records obtained from the district, Kasten was placed on leave in January after multiple female basketball players complained about his use of profanity and derogatory language. Seven players wrote statements detailing the way he spoke to them. One writing, Coach Kasten called us B-words. He cussed us out. Another wrote, what I have expressed with Coach Kasten is some weird, unnecessary behavior towards me. One student wrote that Kasten called another student this name because she was always around boys and called her the same name and said she's sensitive. Multiple complained that Kasten called a student emo and made jokes about her slitting her wrist. In a written response that was included in the report, Kasten denied all wrongdoing. The district placed him on paid leave, and in this letter, the district's Human Resources Department recommended the district move to terminate him if he did not resign by March 31st. And on March 31st, Kasten sent this letter to the district stating he was resigning for personal reasons. The accusations and stuff or whatever, those weren't, those are like, um, I was a part of a staff where um, there were some um, UIL regulations that were not upheld. The UIL just dropped the hammer. Kasten told me he was asked to resign as part of a highly publicized state sports violation involving the school's coaching staff. But in this statement, Duncanville ISD confirmed his employment ended because the district learned he used profanity in his communication with students. While the Duncanville allegations aren't sexual, Terry Miller says they are a red flag. I find the allegations extremely alarming. Miller is the president of an organization called Stop Educators Sexual Abuses, Misconduct and Exploitation. She also has years of experience working to combat sex trafficking. The kind of language that they are accusing him of using and the kind of names and um, degrading of, of little girls is very common in the trafficking world. This person had no business ever in a school. But Kasten did have plans to keep teaching and coaching at Red Oak Middle School. I obtained Kasten's application for the district through a public records request, and he listed two references who worked for Duncanville ISD. In its statement, Duncanville said, quote, at no time did the district receive any formal inquiries from Red Oak ISD about Kasten's background. It goes on to say the district is not aware of any personal references that any Duncanville ISD employees may have given for Kasten. 
but I obtained records from Red Oak's reference checks for Kasten. They show that a Red Oak Middle School assistant principal spoke with Kasten's supervisor, who was an assistant principal at Duncanville High School, and a teacher in his department with a leadership role at Duncanville High School. Records show both people said they would hire Kasten again, and the Duncanville assistant principal said Kasten was really good with students and a good person less than two months after he was forced to resign for using inappropriate language with students. Even though Duncanville's HR department determined Kasten, quote, should not have opportunity to interact with our students as a trusted staff member, his inappropriate language did not reach the threshold of what the TEA requires districts to report, which is a list of things like inappropriate relationships with students or selling drugs or other crimes. And that means his certificate would not have had a flag, giving any district the green light to hire him without knowing he'd been investigated and put on leave unless he or a reference volunteered that information. Transparency is the key to ensuring that children are not endangered. Two other districts where Kasten worked, Dallas and Irving, both refused to hand over documents detailing investigations they did involving Kasten. The Texas Attorney General's office supported Dallas ISD's decision, ruling that Kasten's evaluation and personnel files are confidential. We are still waiting on a ruling on Irving ISD's documents. I've worked around, you know, countless thousands of uh, young adults, you know, ranging from the middle school age to the high school age, and I've never, I've never had any type of, you know, extreme allegations or anything like that, you know, that ever came about, you know. My conduct has been pretty solid for the last, what, 10 years. Kasten maintains his innocence both in and out of the classroom. The young woman in this case told police that you trafficked her and that you, um, had, you all had sexual intercourse and that in that time, in one of the conversations that you had towards the beginning of your interaction, that you told her that you were a teacher. Uh, I have no clue. I, I have to... Um, take that up with my lawyer. I just have no, no. Kasten faces three charges, aggravated sexual assault of a child, trafficking of a child, and compelling prostitution of someone under 18. His case is not yet scheduled to go before a Dallas County grand jury. In Dallas, I'm Morgan Young.